Hi, we are going to talk about political systems, the absurdity of political systems, and possibly the death of political systems. The absurdity and failure of political party systems worldwide. Could there be a new approach? Political party systems worldwide and evidently in US politics have become an outright source of evil, inefficiency and ineffective management or atrocious governance of nations. Bad governance through hyperpartisanship is demonstrated by the sharply polarized situation and inexplicable dark spirit of revenge in which political parties are in fierce disagreement with each other with complete disregard of the good and well-being of society and the nation as a whole that they are supposed to serve. In 1796, President George Washington criticized political parties for allowing what he called cunning, ambitious, and unprincipled men to subvert the power of the people. John Adams rightfully postulated that a division of the republic into two great parties is to be dreaded as the great political evil. Beyond this, political parties per se are riddled with inherent challenges from within, such as lack of internal democracy, a tendency of dynastic succession, or the massive role and influence of wealth and muscle power, especially during elections. Polling and political climate indices show trends of declining popularity and power of the parties in the United States. This seems to not only be a US problem, but rather an international phenomenon. Many people refer to themselves as apolitical today, and the numbers keep rising. A proposed panacea is for political parties to be obliterated. This would curb tribalism, the us versus them affiliations in its many forms that contributes to fear and hate among individuals and society. Getting rid of political parties will consequently and potentially resolve the partisanship conundrum. All candidates would run as independent and non-affiliated individuals based on their own merits, background, experience, philosophy, policies and strategies. Through a bottom-up approach, the decision-making process would start from the bottom of the hierarchy at the micro level rather than at the top, the macro level. These individuals would run in their county first, then district, state, and eventually compete at the federal level. The 50-51 state winners compete against each other at the federal level. The public process could begin in January. The finalists would run against each other in November when the final presidential winner is elected. The same process could be done for the cabinet whose role is to advise the president on any subject relating to the duties of each member's respective office. In the US, there are 24 members or 25 including the vice president, 15 department heads called secretaries, and nine cabinet-level members. The 15 executive departments are agriculture, commerce, defense, education, energy, health, and human services, homeland security, housing and urban development, interior, labor, state, transportation, treasury, and veterans affairs, as well as the attorney general. Endorsements would not play a role in this system, as these are often marred by political ties, money and nepotism. There should be a vetted list of criteria that has to be met to be able to qualify to run for any office or position. They all campaign through roadshows and TV campaigns. Funding such activities could be done through a state or or federally run non-connected or non-affiliated federal PACs. These are independent expenditure only for political committees. This PAC would be funded by taxes, but may receive unlimited contributions from individuals, corporations, labor unions, and other PACs for the purpose of financing independent expenditures and other independently political activities. 
The goal is to deviate from the party funding channel system and bureaucracy that unfairly dominates access to campaign money and instead support independent and truly free democratic election processes for the candidates. In the democratic trias politica, or separation of powers model typically used by non-despotic regimes, the legislative branch makes laws, that is Congress, comprised of the House of Representatives and Senate. The executive branch carries out laws and includes the president, vice president, cabinet, most federal agencies, and the judicial branch evaluates laws and includes the Supreme Court and other courts. This separation of powers through division of government responsibilities in two distinct branches limits any one branch from exercising the core functions of another. As such, the 4I principle role and dilemma exercised to set policies and programs, maintain law and order in the society, to create necessary changes for good governance and to decisively make laws would need to be reviewed. Lobbying is essentially legal bribery or influence, which is an additional problem to tackle. The difference between lobbying and bribery is that lobbying offers no guarantee of a policy outcome. Moreover, the necessity for a clear separation of the state and religion is dire. We do hope that this provokes and inspires thoughtful and fair-minded opinions and discussions across the world. Thank you for listening to this. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this in future.